and some of my friends who were there, who've seen me perform loads, were just like jaw on the floor, like yeah. I, we didn't know that that was in your range. And because it looked so easy and it felt so easy, I was like, oh, that's unlocked something for me. Newcastle-based artist Lee Laurent recently released her debut album titled Not A Genre. The album is comprised of all previously released singles, including fan favourites Little Black Soul and Lovely Boy. Here's the chat that we had with Lee about the album and her upcoming single Fragile Glass. Yeah. All right, so we have to start off with your debut album that you yeah. just dropped like a month ago. Yeah. It's called Not A Genre. Yeah. Can you tell me about the title and how it feels to have it out? Well, it already existed. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, so I went through a phase of just um, releasing singles quite consistently. So I just was like, oh, I think Beyonce was releasing albums and being like, no one makes albums anymore. And I was like, well, you know, we're not all you. So I just kept on putting out singles and they got traction and then I just didn't stop. Mm. So I had 14 and then I was like, oh, actually, I started to realize from like some of my friends being like, oh, I've never heard this song before. Like when I started gigging, I was like, it's on. Like, and it's people who followed me, had me on Spotify or iTunes and they, it just wasn't obvious. Mm. And if things aren't super obvious, like people don't go looking for stuff yeah. that they don't know that they need to go looking for. And I'm the same, even if an artist I really love comes out and has something on, I don't sit in the same way I used to and kind of go through like, I'll listen to every song and see if I like them all. You just kind of go like, what seems like it's going well? Yeah. And I'll listen yeah. to that. <laughs> So I ended up um, kind of compiling it all together and I picked Not A Genre because years ago, I think I was like 22 and I was being signed between mm -hmm. like Warner and Universal or something happened. Something went wrong and we still don't know what that was, boys. Uh, I'm going to say it's a communication issue. Um, but I remember at the time they were like, oh, this guy, and it was very well intended, I just think I wasn't ready for it. And they were like, oh, you know, what's your Instagram going to be like? Have you thought about like what your Instagram persona is? I was like, it's my Instagram, so it'd just be a representation of me, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. And they're like, yeah, but what would it look like? And they wanted me to think wow. about branding in a much clearer like, you know. And they were giving me examples of other famous people and how they did it. And I was like, oh, but I'm a person. Mm. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not a genre. And then it kind of, it kept on coming up because then it was like, oh, what's your style of music? And I was like, mm. well, it's pop singer-songwriter. And, and then they were like, well, you need to have a specific sound for this album it has to and it, you know when you're kind of like you're going it all makes sense to me but I am a person I'm not a genre yeah, and I know what yeah. you're trying to do but that's kind of the point is like all of this is my first compilation of songs so that's what the sound is mm. it's my first iteration of, of this and so when I was like oh what will I chuck it out all under I was like I'll just go back to that thing that was in my mind years ago of just it's almost like retrospective it's like if I had a time turner yeah. if I myself were Hermione <laughs> It was like, oh, how would I do it? And it would be not a genre. And then I just used some stuff. I'm very, like, um, hacky in that I just kind of go, like, oh, what I've already got? Like, mm. what can I use? And Canva is amazing. Yes. Um, so that's how, it, that's how it all happened. So it was very, like, a thought I had years ago. And then I think I started talking about it with some people here. And then I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll do that. Yeah. And it felt right. Like, getting it right was a whole process of, like, does it intuitively feel right? And it did. And then, so that was that. And I was like, all right, cool. We'll check it out. Easy. Well, speaking of socials, mm. now that we've just chat all over them, um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about what you've been posting lately because it's been super intriguing. Like, you've been doing all these little faces and, like, mm. you know, doing different styles of makeup and mm. stuff like that. What's this leading up to? I don't know how to conceptualise it and I don't know if everybody has this moment where you just have a thing of going, like, oh, I kind of just don't want to do what I want, like, exactly what I want. And I moved away from almost a safeguarding the things that I thought would be risky to do or um, people might have opinions on or like what if it doesn't get likes and what if and even just thinking about Instagram as being like a tool rather than always being um, where I post what I've got up to or whatever I think just something changed and I was like oh I really actually want to use this differently or use media differently or explore I don't know there was like a curiosity to it or like a creativity to it and mm. I think the minute you like have a permission however you achieve that yourself like the minute you have a permission to go like oh, I'm just going to do what I want it has just been like oh I'll do anything mm. you know and so then I just did a load of creative shoots which were really fun yes. um, and have like a bunch more and I'm very just like yeah I'll give it a go yeah. and I feel very comfortable with it like if it does well it does well if it doesn't it doesn't like I just I, I'm very 
detached from it. Like I like the process, but I'm very like, oh, I love that for me. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And um, while this is all happening, you're about to uh, release another single called yes. Fragile Glass. Yes. Coming out on the 2nd of the 8th. Yes. Is that right? August? Yes. Yes. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, tell me about the inspiration. Oh, uh, so it's um, already ages ago. It's a song. It's kind. It's kind of a song about codependence. Because yeah. um, I'm a very independent person, and I would experience uh, sometimes people having a conceptualization of who I am in terms of what feedback I could handle. And you see this sometimes, you know, when you've like stopped yourself from like telling a friend like, hey, like that pissed me off or like, oh, come on. All the damn time. Yeah, yes. and so you, you will not say something to protect their feelings. Yes. Whereas I have, um, my belief system is that if you assume people are resilient, they actually respond more resiliently because there's, there's like a trust there of like saying, I'm, I'm sharing this with you because I actually care about you yeah. and I'd like to yeah. preserve like our authentic connection. And so Fragile Glass was almost like a conversation between it's like capturing a conversation between two people where one of them is saying like how you think about me is not how I see myself and you're you're treating me with this fragility that you also have so it's that thing of being like you you know when someone tries to offer you support and you're like why are you trying to support me you're also struggling yeah. can't we just be in this together and like relate like relatedly um share difficulties and then go about our day and kind of treat this as like a part of the human experience so it's, it's a little bit about that but it's it's kind of evolved as it's gone on like the music video for it is a completely different concept it's like a story between two sisters it's really beautiful Aww. um but yeah so it came from that and it's kind of become its own little own little cute beast yeah who's yeah. in the music video oh and i i was gonna say do you know mon but um money conference yes. do you know mon? Yes. Oh, yes. I love mon so she's a dancer so she's just moved to london and i used to be mm -hmm. a dancer so i was i was like linked to her in with a hi mon i linked her in with a bunch of people i was like go to this person speak to this person do this thing and then she does contemporary stuff and i'd seen some mm -hmm. of her videos and oh. i used to train contemporary i went to a contemporary dance school um so i was like oh we should do like the whole video is improv all of it is just a dance video no it's way. completely improv it's amazing so i gave her the concept and um Renaji, who does all the videos everywhere came <laughs> over and i was like right i've changed my concept this is what we're doing and then we shot it really quickly but it's all all of it's improvised it's beautiful yeah that's incredible i got her just before she went back to london i think she was leaving like the next morning i was like we're shooting at this so we had to do it really really quick as a turnaround yeah all right well look i have one final question for you the last time that we caught up was at west best block fest mm -hmm. last year um i'd love to know what what have been some standouts from this year for you other than releasing an album like i'd love to know about performance moments oh my god that's a really good question i don't this is probably not the answer. It's not the answer I thought I was going to give. But maybe I went to an open mic, and I was feeling really like just lo vocally loose, mm. um, and very just not kind of. You just felt really. I don't know how to explain it, but you just kind of get up and you feel fluid. And sometimes when you get up to sing, you can feel like the tension hits your throat, or you can feel like oh I'm nervous, or you care about things that you weren't expecting to care about. Yeah. And I th and I oh, I can't even remember what song I did, but I was hitting some notes. Hey. Yeah. And you know when the room stops mm -hmm. and you know you're doing something, but you're so in the moment that you're kind of like, oh, this is the beauty of it, that you can feel how it's changed the room, but your your entire attention isn't on that. Your entire attention is like, oh, how does how, this feels so good. Mm -hmm. And so, um, oh, I don't even know how to explain it. I just came off and I was like, ooh. I'm a 10, hey, yeah. like I literally ca I came away and it's not always that I feel that I have that same vocal flexibility. So that like for a performance, that was probably one of those moments where I was like, oh, if I actually relax a lot and hydrate and do all of the vocal exercises you're supposed to do, <laughs> um, th things are going to be very, very different for me. And some of my friends who were there, who've seen me perform loads, were just like jaw on the floor. Like yeah. we didn't know that that was in your range. And because it looked so easy and it felt so easy, I was like, oh, that's unlocked something for me. Mm -hmm. So I think that was like almost a transformative moment, I think, maybe. That's amazing. Yeah. Can you remember which open mic it was? Oh, the Rogue Scholar. That was Rogue, mm. yes. Yes. <laughs> That's it. I still haven't been to an open mic at the Rogue. And really? it's like, it seems to be like a cult. I used there. to go all the time, hey, so I'd go every Thursday, I'd get absolutely smashed. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> and then you have to, like, if you're preparing to tour, like now on a Thursday, I go to the gym when it's like, 
dead and I yeah. used the studio to train and do choreo oh. and then I walked past the road because everyone's like yeah this was the best I'm like oh memories no. <laughs> memories yeah all right well thank you so much for coming thank in for a you. chat it's been so great to catch up yeah